Thank you, Jen. Um, why would the U.S. agree to submit written answers to Russia, given that it could undermine or be used to discredit the U.S. negotiating position? And is the U.S. asking for any written responses from Russia? Well, no one sees it that way from the U.S. negotiating team or from our partners and allies around the world. Uh, I think what we're engaged in here is seeing what's possible as it relates to diplomacy. And as I noted, it's not just, it's not written answers like we're filling out a Q&A. We're also going to convey what our concerns are and reiterate a number of the strong statements you've heard the President and Secretary Blinken convey very publicly. So this is just a part of the diplomatic process and diplomatic negotiations and has been a standard part of the process often. Um, uh, with uh, countries and nations where you have agreements, but also disagreements. Does the President have a plan to evacuate Americans from Ukraine? I know there have been um, a range of reports uh, out this morning, which is probably why you're asking, Jackie. I will say that, one, we are already at uh, a level four travel advisory for Ukraine for COVID and have advised that U.S. citizens have been advising that U.S. citizens should be aware of reports that Russia is planning for significant military action against Ukraine. Uh, we do conduct rigorous contingency planning, as we always do in the event of the security, the, any security situation deteriorates in any country around the world. The State Department uh, does that assessment. I would point you to them for any, uh, any predictions or previews of any steps they may take. Is there any effort right now to get a handle on how many Americans are in Ukraine? Because I remember with Afghanistan, that was sort of an open question. Is the dynamic different this time? It's an open question around the world. We don't put a chip in Americans when they go to countries around the world and track their movements. Um, people can register with the State Department. That's something they do. Or they may choose not to register. Or there might be people in any country around the world who are dual citizens who haven't lived in or have never lived in the United States. Um, but the State Department would certainly have the number in terms of Americans who have registered with the State Department. And then is the President aware that he was caught on a hot mic yesterday? And why does he appear here to be dismissing the idea of proactive deterrence. Uh, well, the president certainly does not dismiss that idea, si considering he has taken a lot of steps, including uh, supporting uh, and approving the uh, several sanctions that were put out by the Treasury Department just a couple of days ago. I would note that the United States has delivered more security assistance to Ukraine in the last year than any point in history. In the last year alone, we committed $650 million in security assistance to Ukraine. In total, since 2014, we have committed $2.7 billion. These deliveries are ongoing, including today. There's more deliveries coming. In addition to traditional security assistance, such as the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, the President has authorized the Presidential Drawdown Authority to expedite lethal aid and meet Ukraine's emergency defense needs. We've also utilized third-party transfers authorized by the State Department, allowing U.S. allies and partners to provide U.S. origin equipment from their inventories for use by Ukraine. Specifically, the State Department has given the go-ahead for three NATO allies to rush anti-armor missiles and other U.S.-made weapons to Ukraine. And finally, in identifying additional equipment held in DOD inventories that can be delivered under the Excess uh, Defense Articles Program, among other mechanisms, we recently notified Congress of our intent to deliver M-17 helicopters. So I would say the President is hardly waiting. Actions are pretty clear on that front. And then I want to ask you about something that you said yesterday. Sure. Um, you told me in response to it, it was a Ukraine question, um, it's important to remember who the aggressor is here. The aggressor is Russia and Putin. They are building up military troops. They are pushing out misinformation in Ukraine. So why does it seem like U.S. officials are so concerned about being seen as escalating things if Russia has created this whole crisis? Because I think we want the American public and also the global community to be clear-eyed about propaganda. And they are pushing propaganda about Ukrainians. Uh, certainly there's propaganda pushed here in the United States, but this is about uh, a foreign potential foreign conflict. Uh, it's about the buildup of troops by one power uh, uh, that is a much larger uh, uh, military power than the other on the border. And uh, we want to be very clear with the public about the realities and the facts. One final question on a different topic. Yeah. Um, on crime, yesterday the Manhattan DA clarified his memo um, about downgrading certain crimes, and um, he said armed robberies, for instance, will be prosecuted as felonies, violence against police officers won't be tolerated, clearing up some of the confusion around uh, how the, that office intended to prosecute crimes. Does the White House have a reaction to that or, or welcome that kind of clarification, given that these questions do keep resurfacing? 
I don't have any reaction from here to the decisions of a local district, I think a district prosecutor or a district attorney, yeah. DA. Um, I would say that the president, and, and he'll talk about this, he'll talk about crime, and he asked me about this yesterday, but you, I think, can expect to hear him talk a little bit about uh, crime during his, uh, during his remarks later this afternoon. Uh, the president believes that no one in this country should worry about whether it's safe to ride the subway or go to, or the bus, or go to work, or walk home at night. Uh, and that's why he's put more cops on the beat, ste has stepped up efforts to get illegal guns off the streets, and invested in proven community anti-violence programs. It's also why he's doubled federal support for community pol policing with $300 million more for cities, plus another $700 million more to bolster federal law enforcement. We've been working with mayors and local leaders on this, but I think the president's record, his commitment, uh, speaks for itself. Go ahead. 